Hi, this is Jessica DeMassa in the Guidewell Insights Lounge. I'm at Singularity University's Exponential Medicine, and right now I'm joined by Dr. Stephen Hunt. He is the director for the Penn Image Guided Interventions Lab, and he's also an interventional oncologist. So welcome, Dr. Hunt. It's Thank great you. to have Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about cancer care, sure. um, and in particular, a lot about technology and how it's driving change in the cancer experience. So from your perspective, though, what does need to change in the way that cancer care is provided? I think really what's, what's needed most is sort of a GPS for cancer care. So we have many very effective therapies. But what we have is this information silos. From the point of view of a researcher, so I run a research lab, there's a lot of information that's not shared between groups, that's not shared between institutions, that's not shared between even in various countries where the, where the advances are being made. So a lot of that, those silos need to break down. And we need to get the information out there. And also experience of oncologists on the ground, so the oncologists in the community who are treating cancer, mm -hmm. seeing certain responses, that kind of information. So there needs more of a hive mind. So a lot of that has to do with how do we create a GPS for each patient, where when they're looking forward to their journey through cancer, right. how, do, how are they going to move forward in that in an in a, in a informed way? And then from the researchers, how are they going to move forward to really see what are, the, what are the questions we need to be asking and what are the problems we need to be solving? How, do you, how can we make cancer prevention more affordable? So I think that uh, obviously the, 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 you, you hit upon it right there is prevention. You know? so, so a lot of that has to do with Really, these are policy changes in society. So mm -hmm. how does society structure itself such that we're nudging people to you know, eat the right diet, to get enough exercise, to, for all of those things? Now, that's not going to prevent all cancers, but it definitely will help us in a, in a, in a much more cost-effective way than all the expensive cancer therapies we do later that's necessary after you have cancer. Right. You know? And then I think in terms of driving innovation towards lower cost, a lot of the cost right now is backloaded into each therapy. So each therapy costs a lot of money. What if instead you had teams where, for example, the Cancer X Prize, where what you had was a, a pool of money at the front end, you know, $10 million or something for finding a therapy. Right. It incentivizes the entrepreneurs to really get out there and work hard on that problem. But then on the actual use side, you would have it to be, uh, on each use, it would be a lot lower cost. So overall, you could save, you could save money that way. And in terms of the patient experience sure. with cancer, how, do you, how are you seeing technology empowering patients? How are you seeing technology really drive, I guess, a more personalized experience for the cancer patient? Yeah, so a lot of it is, is I think that the patients themselves are tired of the information silos and they get out there and they form their own patient advocacy groups. Yeah, we've seen and a lot of that. And within that, and you hear a lot about that, and basically my patients all the time show up to me and say, hey, another, pan another patient in this group from another country, from another state, they brought this to my attention, what do you think about that? So that's, that's part of it, is, is that just the patients themselves are starting to direct their care more and more and being involved in the process, very proactive, out there gathering the information and breaking down those silos. So I think that that's, that's part of it is, and then some people have, there are now, they're starting to be these navigators. So we at our institution actually use humans. So we have a navigator for your cancer care that helps you through the process, that helps you to realize well, an interventional oncologist is different from a radiation oncologist who's different from a surgical right. oncologist who's different from a medical oncologist. So all these people are part of a team, and they help them keep it straight in their head as to what, what each member of the team is doing. Now, we, as, as in, in our institution, we have these multidisciplinary meetings where each cancer mm -hmm. patient, their care and coordination happens at the meeting where we talk about every different modality that's out there, even which chemotherapeutic they're going to be on, and we try to coordinate it, but the patient doesn't get to see that. Right. So if we can share that information, they can be part of that conversation or in some way be involved in that process, they'll be much more empowered to understand why the decisions were made that were made going forward, why they're being treated in this way, and why the next steps are X, Y, Z. That kind of transparency can only help, I, I would imagine, bring a lot of reassurance to that whole experience. So let me ask you one final question to wrap sure. up. You know, just generally speaking, I mean, you can talk in your role as an interventional oncologist or sure. just even as a, a physician or just somebody in healthcare. What has you most optimistic about the future for healthcare? So, uh, and, and particularly healthcare as it, as it pertains to cancer, we have a lot of scientific breakthroughs. There's mm -hmm. the CRISPR revolution, the ability to really get in there and determine which genes are contributing to this cancer's you know, uh, pathogenicity. Um, we have the immunotherapy revolution, which I do a lot of work on cancer immunotherapy, so that's very exciting right. to me. Um, but I think that the fact that patients are more engaged and they're more uh, aware of the cancer landscape that is the biggest driver towards changing the way things are done. Because they get out there, they, they don't want to see these silos. 
No. They're tired of hearing, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know, and, and why can't we share this information? So I think that the patients themselves are driving the revolution. Excellent, that's wonderful. I love that it's it's more of a grassroots movement and it's patient focused that's really shifting the paradigm ahead. Yeah. That's wonderful. Dr. Hunt, thank you so much thank you for, for joining me. us here. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm Jessica DeMassa reporting from the Guidewell Insights Lounge here at Singularity University's Exponential Medicine. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Lucas. Mm-hmm.